the best photorealism in generative AI so far? Well, we are on the journey to find it, and uh, we are one step closer, I think. Hello, friends, and welcome. Today, we'll continue our journey on how to find the best photorealistic images with stable diffusion. I'm going to show you a new model that I like. We're going to add some lures to that, and uh, let's see if we can create some cool looking photorealistic images. Let's get started. Hey, do you know when a joke becomes a dad joke? When it's fully grown. Here's a portrait of a man astronaut, and I think this is well, it's just a fantastic image. It feels like it's straight out of Space Odyssey 2001, which is a great movie, by the way. Now, I don't remember how well it has aged. My memory says it's a great movie, but um, still cold looking images. So we're currently doing some live renders here. We're doing portrait of a woman. We have detailed eyes and sunset at the beach. And what we're doing today is trying to achieve more of a photorealism style. And, and to help with that, we're using a new model that has been trained specifically on realism. But we're also going to add a LoRa to help where some of these models failed, the, the eyes specifically. We're also going to look a little bit on the skin texture and, you know, what makes these images realistic. And something I've noticed in with SDXL in general is the skin just looks weirdly oily and plasticky and not, not really realistic at all. But I feel that so far, this model has um, achieved uh, very good results. And we're getting close to the realism that we've seen in Stable Diffusion 1.5 and are getting consistently, well, pretty good images. So. As I said, this is a live render, so we're getting four images here. Uh, so these are non cherry pick, and all of them are, I would say, pretty okay. Now, as you may know from using stable diffusion, you're not going to get perfect images all the time, but um, it's going to be less, less to throw away. I think this is fairly good. Here you can see that the skin starts to look maybe a little too fake, but. Uh, I mean, the eyes are good here, and uh, I, I think like this one is pretty okay. Here we're starting to see some better looking skin. We can actually see what begins to look like pores. Uh, I think in general, when you try to achieve like dry skin, you could actually put that in like dry skin, skin fuzz, visible skin hair, try stuff like that to get like the imperfections in. Skin blemishes. Just do a quick render of something else and I'm going to show you what I'm using to achieve this. So I've changed it to portrait of a woman in 17th century with jewels and ball outfit. And for this we added some of the prompts we talked about. Dry skin, skin fuzz, visible skin hair, skin blemishes. And we'll see what we can get from that. While this is rendering, I'm going to show you the model that I'm using, and that is realistic stock photos. This is from a guy or well, gal, I don't know, from Sharing Samaritan and recommends a CFG scale of three. And it's primarily made for close up photos, photos of people. And it's been trained with, well, stock photos. And when I saw it the first time, this was the image that I saw, and it just felt very plain. And I think that that is what I've been looking for in SDXL for a long time. Just plain, regular, old images like, you know, a selfie you can see on, on Facebook or, or whatever. Not all of this super hyped up, beautiful, amazing looking images. Here's just a man sitting on, on the um, toilet looking at his phone, just in a suit. Well, not as, as a shirt and a tie and a suit pants, so it's not a full suit, but still looks very much like a stock photo. So does this image, you know, they look plain. I think that's a, a very good thing and something that many people are looking for in generative AI, especially in professional use. Download this model, put that in your uh, models folder, stable fusion, just drop that right in. If you are using uh, Comfy or Ruin Focus or something else, the stable fusion folder is gonna be named checkpoints instead. So if that's the case, gonna look like this, models, checkpoints, just drop them in there. And then we're going to get the lower I have here, which is called detail eyes. And same here, just download this and drop it into your models LoRa's folder. And that's going to be same for all the user interfaces, whether it's automatic 1111, ruin focus, comfy, whatever. And the point of detail eyes is 
well to get more detailed eyes. Now this example isn't perfect because they're a little too shiny and everything, but you can see here on the left one and in, whether in SD XL in general, the eyes are kind of messed up a lot of the time. Now we're not going to go for those, these anime eyes, which we we're going to do photorealism, but uh, I mean, you get the point. It's going to work great. We can see here our images actually that the eyes that we are getting here are better than the original. So I think this is a cool example of the image is feeling very plain. You don't have all that bokeh. You don't have a lot of beautiful lighting and just perfect everything. It's, it's like a plain photo. And I just love how the way this looks. I think for me, this is much more realistic than a lot of other images out there. This is also very nice. This one's great. Now the eyes are the eyes are a little crooked here, so that could be in painted. But you can see here when you start adding the skin blemishes, you can see that we are seeing some marks here and there, and especially here on the chest, you can see there's a birthmark here, there's a birthmark there, birthmark. It's just it just looks more natural, it looks more real, more authentic. It's not that perfect symmetry where everything is just smooth out and perfect because life isn't perfect any image or human isn't perfect i think this is a great model to be starting off with while working with photorealism now we are using ruin which is a fork of, of focus and what i've done here in the models i am loading the realistic stock photo here and i'm actually not using a refiner which may or may not surprise you. I'm also using the Juggernaut Cinematic LoRa and the Detail Eyes LoRa. So I'm actually going to get that for you as well. Uh, so this is Juggernaut Cinematic XL LoRa, and it just gives a little more the cinematic vibe. Jack the color graded. Now these images aren't really what we're looking for because these aren't looking as real as we want. But you can mix and match and and you know use them together. And same here, download, put in your models, and then LoRa folder. Now, this LoRa also works great with the Juggernaut model that we looked at in a, in a previous video. But if you are trying to make more plain realism, I found that realistic sock photos is um, much better at uh, performing that. So let's keep, get back here to our part of a woman and let's try to change her into something else. Let's turn this into a woman fashion model on the runway and um, let's change from the style here the cinematic and let's actually add the analog film and we're running four new images and, and now this will be less cinematic and more like a vintage old photo so it's going to be like a 70s kind of vibe i, I would uh, venture to guess so uh, we'll see i'll speed this part up for you so you don't have to wait and uh, listen to my rambling along now it's almost finished here and you can clearly see that while the images are still plainish the women are not and probably from you know the fashion model on the runway kind of style so they're looking slimmer and more well fashion model kind of now the colors are a little dull and that is also affected by the style here the analog film I'm gonna head back into cinematic and we're actually gonna render portrait of a viking woman warrior sitting in a coffee shop and the rest are the same we just changed the style to the cinematic one and here we have our viking woman warrior starting to finish here this is fairly okay now this didn't really work with What's going on here we've got half a hand and kind of messed up this hand's pretty good though from the looks of it however these eyes didn't work but uh, i mean we are getting somewhere i think in general the results are pretty fantastic i mean in stable fusion 1.5 you basically had to in paint almost all of the faces half of the generations were you know smooth um so i'm very happy with the, the direction we're taking and how fast sdxl is progressing uh, the base model of SDXL can barely do realistic images at all. I'm happy with this. If you are too, check out this video here.